Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to go for a deeper understanding of Babylon because one of the uh, most pertinent prophecies for understanding the end times of today would be to understand Babylon the Great. And you'll find Babylon the Great in Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Now during this prophecy Babylon was still a city and there's several things about Babylon but um, I think to understand what Babylon the Great means the key to understanding that would be to understand who Babylon was in the first place. So let's go back into scripture and take a look at Babylon in the time of Daniel and see if we can get some clues as to what is meant by Babylon the Great. Now don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and help uh, move this video forward. Thank you. Okay, most of you have uh, looked at this already, Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. For those of you who haven't, we'll go through it very quickly. Now, okay, Daniel, the prophet, has been carried off by Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And now he's in Babylon, and he becomes uh, one of the chief advisors to the king. Uh, you'll find out about that in Daniel chapter 1. Now, in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, dreamed a dream. Okay? And he commanded all the magicians and sorcerers, and they they came, and, and he said, I have my dream, I dreamed a dream, my spirit is troubled to know. And they said, well, tell us what the dream is, and we'll tell you what it means. And he says, uh, it's gone from me, I don't remember the dream. If you will not make me, make known to me the dream with the interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation. You know, if you're so smart and you know everything, then show me the dream and the, ter and the interpretation. They answered and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show you the interpretation. And the king said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time, because the thing is gone from me. If you will not make known to me the dream, then you will die. Okay, so now Daniel, he is one of these interpreters. But he wasn't there at the time. But he, he's also going to die if he can't interpret this dream. Okay, and the, the, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man on this earth that can show the king the matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler, that asks such things that any magician or astrologer or a Chaldean. And it's a rare thing that the king requires, and there is none other that can show it to the king except the gods, and their dwelling is not with flesh. So the king was angry, and he commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel was one of the wise men. So the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows, his three friends, to be slain. And Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which came to slay the wise men. And he answered, and he said, Why is this decree so hasty? And Arioch made the thing known. And Daniel asked for a bit of time, that he would show the king the interpretation. Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to his three friends, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his friends should not perish with the rest of the wise men. 
Then the Daniel was the secret re was revealed to Daniel in a dream, a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom, wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons, and he removes kings and sets up kings. So this is Daniel has, heard, has just had the dream, and he knows what the dream is, and he knows the interpretation of it. And what is he saying? He's, he's praising God. He changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. And he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known to me now what we desired of you, for you have now made known to us the king's matter. There Daniel went into the Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. And he went and said to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. Arioch brought in Daniel before the king hurriedly, and he said to him, I found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, because the Babylonians renamed him from Daniel to Belteshazzar. Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation of it? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men cannot, the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers, they can't show to the king, but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days. Your dream and your visions of your head on your bed are these. So this is a key. What is God, what is Daniel saying? That the, the, the king of Babylon has the dream. And God is showing to the king of Babylon what will be in the latter days. That's very important. As for you, O king, your thoughts came into your mind upon your bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that reveals the secrets made known to thee, to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have, more than any that are living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that you might know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, saw and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before you, and the form was terrible, or great, uh, amazing. This image's head was of fine gold, and his breast and his arms were silver, and his belly and his thigh thighs were brass, and his legs were iron, and his feet were part iron and part clay. And you saw till a stone was cut out without hands, and the stone hit the image on its feet that were iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. Then the iron and the clay and the brass, the silver and the gold, broke to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. Now I, I explained that in uh, my last video I did. The, the, the way the wheat was harvested, they would bring it on the threshing floor, and it was the whole husk of the wheat that was harvested, and they would break them open on the threshing floor, and when they broke them open, then you would have the husk and the seed together in a pile, and then they would throw them up in the air with a rake type of thing, and when they throw them up in the air, 
the chaff, the light husky chaff, would blow away in the wind, and the seed, which is heavy, would fall back down. And that's how they would separate the chaff from the seeds. So he's saying, okay, so the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold were broken to pieces, like into a pile, and they became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away. So no place was found for them. And the stone that hit the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell you the interpretation before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven, he has given to you in your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. And after you shall come another kingdom inferior to you, and then a third kingdom of brass after them, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things, and as iron that breaks all of these, it shall break in pieces and bruise. So the fourth kingdom was, of iron will be very strong. And whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of iron. For as much as you saw the iron mixed with clay. And as the toes of the feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And when you saw the iron mixed with clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So there will be a mixing in this kingdom, but they shall be divided. And in the days of these kings, that's the time of the feet, the God of heaven shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it broke to pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. Then the king fell on his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors to him. It's like he worshipped him like a god. <laughs> and the king answered to Daniel, of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of circuits and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou could reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested of the king, and he set his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. So there it is. That's uh, Daniel chapter 2, very famous prophecy. All right, I just pulled this up off a line uh, somewhere. It's a poster. Uh, 
So here's a, re a representation of the dream. Okay, there's Babylon, the head of gold, the Medo-Persian Empire, the, the bust of silver, then the thighs of bronze would be the Greece, the Greek Empire, Alexander the Great, and then the uh, legs of iron would be the Roman Empire, the Eastern and Western Empire. So this is how it's interpreted uh, traditionally by Christians. And there's the feet of iron mixed with clay. And we are here. And uh, the, the, uh, the square, the stone cut without hands out of the mountain that hits the feet of the image, that's... Uh, it hits the feet of the image, smashes it into pieces. The pieces are blown away by the wind, and the kingdom of Christ grows through the whole earth. So this is a typical Christian interpretation that has been told over and over for probably over 400 years now. Now, um, there's, a there's a slight problem with this interpretation. The problem is, is that this dream was given to the king of Babylon in Babylon to show him what would happen to his kingdom. And Rome never really controlled his kingdom. Rome never controlled Babylon. Hadrian conquered it. For, I don't know, maybe a couple of years. It, it, they never really had it for much. Uh, barely a glimpse. So that doesn't really count for being another empire in this succession of empires, does it? Um, th this is from a perspective of Jerusalem. But even that is a little off, because where's the Maccabean Empire? Where's the Hasmonean dynasty? Where, where's, you know, there's, there's uh, problems with that too. So there's problems with that interpretation. Now the, the image itself and the simplicity of the interpretation, it's a succession of empires. And... Um, you could also think of it as the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. And that makes sense. And we're, you know, in the times of today, it's still the Iron Age, but people are not clinging together. Everybody's on their own. All the kingdoms are doing their own thing. Um, you could interpret it that way. But I'm going to show you another way that it can be interpreted, too. Now, I know Wikipedia is not exactly a scholarly document, um, but it's a good overview. You know, if you want a bird's eye view of a historical uh, events in history in a per certain place, uh, Wikipedia is a good bird's eye view to start. You can't quote it and, and use it as a reference, but you can use it as a quick quick guide, like a, a quick answer card to see, you know, the, an overview of places. So that's what we're going to do here, okay? History. History of Babylon is what this is, okay? Now, this the old the old Babylonian period, but this dream was given to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. I think that's uh, that's part of his kingdom, the Ishtar Gate. It's in the British Museum now, I think, isn't it? No, it's in uh, it's in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. That was from Babylon. But anyway, the Nebuchadnezzar's time was called the Neo-Babylonian Empire. So this is where the part in history where the the dream was given to, to Nebuchadnezzar. 
Okay, so he's the head of gold. That was already determined. And there would be a kingdom coming after him that would be the arms of silver. And the two arms, would you could say, would be like the Medo, Medes and Persians, the Medo-Persian Empire. The Medes and Persians got together and made the, the Persian Empire. So that's the uh, arms and chest of silver, the Persian Empire. And they ruled for from 539 till, uh, until 300. 330, so 200 years. Then now Alexander the Great conquered all of that area and took over Babylon, the whole area of Babylon, and that's the Hellenistic period. And now when Alexander died, his four generals basically divided his kingdom up. And um, Babylon fell under the Seleucid Empire. So that sort of counts all as the Hellenistic Empire. So that would be the torso of bronze, the Bronze Age. But then what happened? After that, you have the renewed Persian rule. They have what they call the Parthian and Sassanid Empires. The Parthian Empire it was like a re reemergence of the Persian Empire. See, that's how big it was. It took over all of this. So there's Iraq there. Babylon would be right there. So it's basically the Iranian Empire. Okay. And and these two are put together because the Parthian and Sassanid. See the Sassanid Empire. The second Persian Empire, or Neo-Persian Empire, was the last Iranian Empire before the Muslim conquest. So this is the two legs, or the two legs of iron, as the prophecy would say, right? The Parthian and Sassanid Empires. And then the feet of clay for Babylon, for this area, you see, where's Rome? Rome? Rome wasn't ever, Rome was never in here. Only briefly, like extremely briefly. Like a few years, it doesn't count. Um, so we would have to say that these two empires would be the legs. And then where's the feet? Iron mixed with clay the Muslim conquest. That would be the clay. You know, the clay is the Arabs coming out of the desert and the empire is, the, the strength of the empire is still Persia, but it's a Muslim. It, it changed religion. The, the government didn't actually change to a different government the government changed religion. So, and it's mixed with clay. It's iron mixed with clay. It's like they took on some of the culture of the Persians, but they brought in their, their culture as well. Right? And is, this is the time the city of Babylon was destroyed. And According to medieval Arabic writings, Babylon was a popular site to extract bricks which were used to build Baghdad and Basra. So there's the end of Babylon. So this is Nebuchadnezzar's, this is the end of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. This is the end of his city. His, his, he built that city, right? And so this is the Muslim the Muslims would be that final feat with clay. Um, and then in the dream it says, and in the days of these kings, now it would be at this time here, during this time, 
See, the Parthian Empire was from 247 BC to 224 AD. So during this time is when the kingdom of Christ came to earth. So, so the Jesus coming would be the rock being cut out of the mountain without hands. So now there's this kingdom not of this world and it's cut out of the mountain without hands. And that's the, the, the um, first advent of Christ. And then during the time of the feet of this image, when this is all Muslim land still, that's when the rock hits the feet and the, that's the second coming of Christ and the the and and all of these kingdoms you see we still have Babylonian kingdom we still have Persian and Roman and Muslim um, parts in of our culture even in the in the West we are basically under Roman law, and uh, we have um, Babylon invented, like from from that from that area from Mesopotamia. We have the 360 degrees of a circle. We have the 12 months of the year. We have uh, the four directions. We have so many different things from that culture in our culture. And we have a lot of Persian things in our culture and uh, Muslim things and Babylonian things. So that is like when the kingdom of Christ comes, that will be turned to dust and there will be a new culture, the culture of God. So that sort of is what the dream means to me. Now, it, to me, it obviously isn't Rome. <clears throat> See, here's the Roman Empire under Hadrian. All the brown, basically. And you can see that, you know, there was a brief time when he got down in here, into the, into the, plain of Sumer, but it was very brief. See, there it is, the red line here. This red line is his empire. And there were, they were constantly at war, at war with the Parthians. And the Parthians were very involved also with the Herodian dynasty and those struggles going on between the Romans and the Parthians. The, the Herodian dynasty sort of grew out of that. Um, but the Romans never, you can't say they ever really ruled over Babylon. I think this interpretation as the Roman Empire is just wishful thinking. we got to think more along the lines of this Sassanid, Parthian and Sassanid dynasties leading up to the Muslim conquest. That would be in Babylon. Now to understand Babylon the Great, let's uh, take a look at Daniel chapter 3. So after the king of Nebuchadnezzar gets this dream, and he practically worships Daniel for interpreting it, what is his reaction? Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was 60 cubits and the breadth 6 cubits. And he set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather together the princes, governors, and captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, from all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image, which Nebuchadnezzar set up. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, judges, treasurers, blah, 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 uh, they all came to the image he set up, and they stood before the image. And the herald cried out, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the trumpet, 
and the music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. And whoever does not worship the image will be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So what does Nebuchadnezzar do? He makes a, an image that is gold all the way from the head to the feet. So he's trying to change the course of history by changing this prophecy and making all the people worship this image of gold. And he thinks that, okay, if he worships, if they all worship this image of gold, giant image, then that will change the prophecy and make him the king forever. And anybody who doesn't do it gets thrown into the furnace. Okay? And then at that time, all the people heard the sound and all the stuff, and they all fell and worshipped the golden image. And at that time, certain Chaldeans came near, came near and accused the Jews. Chaldeans are basically people from Mesopotamia. Mesopot Mesopotamia. Uh, there uh, would be Assyrians, Babylonians, and others that are in that area. And they spoke to the king and said, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have made a decree, every man shall hear the sound of the music and shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoever does not will be cast into the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who have you have set over the affairs of the province, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These guys have not regarded you, and they did not worship the image. Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? And now, if you be ready, at the time you hear the sound of all the music, uh, you will worship the image that I have made, but if you do, do not worship it, you will be cast into the fiery furnace. And he said, Who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? So they uh, answered and said to the king, We are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you that we will not serve your gods or worship your golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and his visage was changed against them, and he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was when it should be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind them up and cast them into the fiery furnace. And these men were bound and and they were cast into the furnace. Those Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel's three friends. I don't know why Daniel wasn't there. He's just not in this prophecy. He must have been somewhere else, I guess. So therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed the men that, that took them up to throw them in. And the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the fire. Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And he rose up and hurried and spoke and said to his counselors, Did we not cast these three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire, fire, and he spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come here. Then they came out of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and kings, and counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire passed on to them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies. Say, so he has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. See, so he could not change the prophecy. He tried. Therefore I make you the decree that every people, nation, language which speaks anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god that, that can deliver after this sort. Then he promoted them in the province of Babylon. So uh, that is sort of an indication of the of how Babylon operates. They they tried to change the prophecy by making a pure golden statue, because they want to be worshipped. They want to be in charge of everything. Okay. Here's the story of the beginning of Babylon. The whole earth, this is Genesis, Genesis chapter 11. The whole earth was one language and one speech, and it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Now Shinar is Sumer, which is the lower Mesopotamia. And they dwelt there, and they said to one another, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach to heaven. And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Because he told them to go forth into the earth and multiply and spread out into the earth. But here they are all in one city building a big tower. And he says, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Let us go down there and confound their language that they may not understand one another. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. Therefore the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from there did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. So this is the how Babylon started, by trying to make a giant city, a one, one, one rule under one government, and not have... Uh, different peoples having different nations and different tribes. So if we want to understand Babylon the Great, we're going to look at this, okay? There's the Muslim leadership and there's the Roman leadership, of spiritually speaking, okay? These guys here, this is, this, this is Rome's answer to Christianity. And this is the Arab answer to the Bible. And they want to come together and make one rule for the whole earth. So that's, this is what I think Babylon the Great is somehow associated with not just this guy, but with this whole thing. You know, they're sitting together at one table and tr planning to rule the whole world. The only thing is once they get that then they're gonna fight each other for who gets to rule that. Is usually the way it goes. 
So that makes the end of this video. Okay, that concludes our video for today. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and share the video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next week.